our first speaker this morning is Therese Sells. Therese Sells joined CSL Livermore Valley in 2014 and immediately knew that she found her spiritual home. She enjoys participating in classes and workshops and feel, feels blessed to serve this community as a board men member. Let us give Therese a warm welcome. God has a vision. God has given us the vision of heaven on earth. Now, I believe that this vision of heaven on earth is our collective vision. So when we say in the, in the prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, to me, um, asking or saying thy will, to me it's the same as God giving us the vision. So in the visioning process, when we ask, what is God's vision for my life, or what is God's vision for this planet, it's the same as saying, to me it's the same as saying, what is God's will? Now, I, like to, I like the um, vision because to me it gives me a concrete picture or idea or thought of what that is. So Michael Beckwith describes the visioning process as a technology. And I thought, oh, I can relate to that. So we use technology, we have information, we have all the input, we have the information, and then we get an output. So the output is a vision, and in this case, I was asking myself, what is the input? What are we accessing? So I believe that we are accessing the universal mind. Um, there's, we can use different names for the universal mind. I like to call it the Christ consciousness. And the reason I do is because as we refer to Jesus as the Christ, I believe this was the consciousness that he was accessing, that he set in motion for all of us to access. So we can um, access, we each, I believe, this, this is just an analogy using the vision. There's a lot more to the whole visioning process. So... Um, I believe we each have a part of that vision, and we're given our own specific visions that come together and make the collective vision. So um, within the, with receiving the vision, we also receive the means to attain the vision. And I'm going to talk about some of the specifics I've been given as the means. I know my number one, well, first of all, we, in the process, we ask, what must I release? So for me, what I believe we have to release is what is the blockages to the vision, to seeing that vision, to knowing that vision, to living the vision. So what I have been given in my um, purpose is the number one is forgiveness, the practice of forgiveness, um, non-judgment, um, and it's, it's, to me, it's an ongoing practice. There's, I always, at times, I've thought I was done. Uh, oh, I forgive that person. But, and something else comes up, and I realize I'm talking about them, I'm condemning them, or whatever. So I know it's a practice, and I know that as we practice all of our spiritual practices, we practice and we practice, and we practice until we can't get it wrong. So that's what I like to remember. That's what I'm working on. And... I know that once we get to that point, then it's a natural way of being. So within, um, so also um, for me, what I have learned is that after the forgiveness is removing the blockages, and then also within the Christ consciousness, what I like to think of as the vision actually has two meanings to me. It's the vision we see, and it's also the vision we use. So in order to see that vision, I believe we have to use the vision that we're given. And that is, to me, I think of it as the vision given through the Christ consciousness, given the vision of Christ. So it was like in the reading, it said, we look to that uh, point in the center. And when we can look in the, in the center of all our brothers and sisters of everyone, then we, we are seeing with that vision of the Christ consciousness. And we see the perfection. So um, recently, I was um, going, I've been going through changes this year, some of you know, and I was laid off my job. So I'm like, 
what do I want? What do I want next? And I was going through the visioning process asking, but what is the vision? And I felt like I wasn't getting anything. So I'm like, all right, I'm not getting anything. So one day I was meditating, I was talking to my guides, and all of a sudden I got, you want, what would satisfy your soul? So I realized that that is what I want. We hear in this teaching a lot, be clear in what you want. Well, I wasn't clear in what I want, wanted until I heard that. It said, you want what would satisfy your soul. So what I realized is that I was looking in the wrong place. In the um, part of the teaching says, um, seek ye the kingdom first. So I realized when I seek the kingdom first, what I really want is to satisfy the longing of my heart and satisfy my soul, which is fulfilling my purpose. So I invite you to just think about that. And maybe, maybe that works for you. Maybe that's something you can consider. Because I do believe that heaven on earth is attainable. It takes our willingness. It takes our trust. It takes our spiritual practices. And one day, maybe you'll just see that when the ordinary becomes extraordinary, when you see that holiness in all things, then you know heaven and earth as one. Namaste. Teresa Sells, thank you so much.